there are seven cervical vertebrae. We're going to ignore the first two, at least right now, and that would be the atlas bone and the axis bone. And we're going to concentrate mainly on a representative of cervical vertebrae three through seven. So let's move these out of the way and take a closer look at this little fella right here. The very first thing we see with this vertebrae, like all vertebrae, is that we have something called a body or a centrum. This is where the actual vertebrae articulate with each other uh, in relation to something called an intervertebral disc, which is a pad of fibrocartilage making a symphysis between the vertebrae. If you take a look here, we have the spinous process, which is uh, again something common to all vertebrae except for one. And notice on the cervical vertebrae, however, the spinous process have what are called a bifurcation, that is a split. So that's unique to the cervical vertebrae. The spinous process is held to the rest of the bone via two bony projections, one coming here, one coming here. And these are referred to as the lamina. And over here, we have what are called the transverse processes, one on this side, one on this side. And again, unique to the cervical vertebrae, we have something special, and that would be the transverse foramen. The transverse foramen are holes that the vertebral arteries and veins travel through. Likewise, there's a large hole here, which is just simply referred to as the vertebral foramen. And of course, this is where the spinal cord will pass through. This is common to all vertebrae. There are superior articular surfaces, and so that's one here. And then if we flip this bone around, we have inferior articular surfaces, which we see right here. This is the atlas bone. The atlas bone is the first cervical vertebrae, and this is the vertebrae that articulates with the skull. The point of articulation is right here at the superior articular surface. It's where the occipital condyles rest on the first cervical vertebrae, again, the atlas bone. This creates, of course, a condylar joint. Now, two things that are unique about the atlas bone is the fact that there is no spinous process and there is no body. We do, however, have an anterior arch and a posterior arch, complete with posterior tubercle and anterior tubercle. Likewise, on the internal surface of the atlas bone, we have a place of art articulation for the dens of the axis bone, which is the second for its cervical vertebrae. That creates a pivot joint, and it's also referred to as the alanoaxial joint. We also see some very pronounced transverse processes, complete with transverse foramen. And remember, the transverse foramen are the regions where the vertebral arteries travel through, as well as the vertebral veins. Here are the lateral masses which essentially support the articular surfaces. So once again, let's take a look at this surface. This one almost looks like footprints in mud, this great big superior surface. If we flip this around, much rounder surfaces, almost like snowshoe tracks. And this is, of course, the inferior surface for the articulation with the axis bone. The second cervical vertebrae is called the axis bone axis because of this structure here called the dens, which sort of sticks up like a little axis. Let's take a little closer look at it. I'm going to tilt, tilt it just a bit. The axis bone sort of reminds me of a football player in prayer just before the big game. You can see that he's got his big shoulder pads on, and the shoulder pads, of course, are the superior articular surfaces. And here's his arms. The arms are coming around. These are, of course, the lamina forming a spinous process, which, as all cerv cervical vertebrae are, this is bifurcated. Now, the dens itself is actually the body of the atlas bone, which is the first cervical vertebrae that is migrated down to form what's called a pivot joint. And specifically, this is the alanoaxial joint. Let's go back to this odontoid process. It's also called the, the dens. And this, of course, means tooth. You can see the little tooth-like projection. So either odontoid or dens, both of these translate to tooth or tooth-like. Um, and of course, our little football player is in prayer because he's not wearing a helmet. So uh, this is not going to be good for him. At least he makes a great joint.
So we can see if we flip this fellow over, the rest of the body or centrum. We also see where the rest of this irregular bone is attached to the body or centrum in a place called the pedicel. So that's a fairly good region to see this. And of course, um, we also have something that's unique to the cervical vertebrae, not to this particular bone, but to all cervical vertebrae, and that is the transverse foramen. So that would be the axis bone. This model demonstrates the vertebral artery traveling through the transverse foramen of the cervical vertebrae. Again, seven cervical vertebrae, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first one being the atlas bone, second being the axis bone. Notice that that goes in alphabetical order, atlas, axis. We can also see the intervertebral foramen here where we have the little stubs that represent the spinal nerves. So the little holes that are created by the vertebrae articulating with each other create what are referred to as the intervertebral foramen. Something else we see is the symphysis, which is the intervertebral disc, which is, of course, going to be between each vertebrae until we get down to the sacrum.